Okay, uh, so thanks for your time. Thanks for yeah, taking the time to um, uh, accompany me in this journey through the, this new future that we are introducing. Actually, the LoRa One, the LoRa Alliance introduced one year ago, and we are now uh, very recently um, making available to the, to the rest of the, of the ecosystem through our stack. Uh, so that's the agenda of my uh, talk. We are very, let's say, four points, uh, essential points. Uh, we will start uh, why the ecosystem found the need for a relay. What's the problem that we are solving with, this, uh, with, with the relay? Uh, I also want to spend a few words about the main requirement, requirements that have shaped the, um, the, the characteristics uh, of the relay and the specification, the definition of the specification, and also uh, go through some representative uh, use cases uh, that we uh, got from the fields, from the customers that were uh, inquiring for a solution. Uh, third point is quick uh, review of the principle uh, with which the relay works. Uh, what are the schemes that we are activating uh, as with this uh, protocol at dawn? And also some insights on the trade-off uh, for the uh, battery lifetime of the device. And I will end the call with the few takeaways. Uh, so what's the problem that you are solving? So uh, when there is a need to uh, comply with very stringent KPIs that requires uh, coverage reaching, uh, let's say, levels of um, um, above 95%, toward 98, 99%. Then what we saw is that the, uh, the, the network deployers were facing uh, big cost uh, in terms of uh, ratio between the overall uh, capex and uh, the sensor, okay? Uh, and uh, this big burden in terms of cost was of course not coming from the uh, 95% of the population, of the coverage uh, for, for the population, but for the last 5%. We really see increasing a lot the overall cost uh, of, of the uh, infrastructure because of the KPI requiring something that goes well above 95%. So that's the main problem that we, are, we have been facing today. And so we as an alliance, we try to, uh, we envision it to, to solve this problem with a simple, low power and low cost network extender capable to bring this additional uh, surplus of coverage, keeping capex and opex of deployments uh, low. And here, I want to make a very clear statement. When I say high cost of deployments, I'm not only uh, talking about or meaning about the raw cost of the gateway itself. That's just a piece of the picture, and maybe it's not the most important part. It's really the global cost of finding a place where a gateway must be placed and making sure that this gateway there will find an electrical grid and uh, an internet backhaul where it could be uh, plugged. Okay, that's the overall cost, okay? So really now we can say that uh, the wool Alliance ecosystem has a much more flexible way to cope with this problem. Uh, what are the main requirements that uh, um, along the process of, of, of the specification uh, definition uh, have been shaping the relay? So first of all, I mentioned again, low power and low cost. But what does it mean? Low cost, what does it mean low power? Uh, for low cost, we essentially mean that the hardware bomb that uh, uh, you need to build a relay, it's nothing else than, uh, or it's, we can say, equivalent to the bomb required for our standard class A 
LoRaWAN uh, uh, sensor, okay? There are small differences, we will see later what, but basically it's fair to say that we have been capable to achieve and fit this first target. Low power translates into the possibility to have a relay which is battery powered. So the power consumption, the overall power consumption of the device with some fair, reasonable, and realistic assumptions can work for several years with a battery, okay? Now, uh, another point is that the relay should be capable to um, manage a fair amount of devices, not too much, because we don't want to replace gateways. I mean, we cannot replace gateways. We just want to bring additional coverage on a small cluster of devices at the edge. In this case, today, the, the, the relay is capable to manage up to 16 devices. Third point, uh, relay must be seen or must appear to the rest of the network as a simple uh, standard LoRaWAN device. That's another requirement that we, uh, we were capable to achieve. Uh, fourth one, very, very important these times, relay must be secure as a LoRaWAN uh, standard device. There are no concessions on the security for the relay and for the devices that the relay will manage. And last but not least, uh, the end device that is managed through a relay could be uh, reversible to a behavior of a standard LoRaWAN class A or class B devices when there is no need uh, to, have, to be managed by a relay, for instance. The network must uh, be capable to understand that a device now has a gateway proximity, and then the network server could be capable to say, now you don't need to go through any more relay, uh, better for you to reach directly the gateway. And maybe the relay in that case could be moved in, uh, in another place, okay? So incrementally, we built this uh, uh, extra coverage at the edge, okay? So those are my opinion, the, the main points that have shaped the specification of the relays, and we have been uh, uh, capable to capture in the final implementation. Now, what are the use cases? So, uh, I already mentioned, main, let's say, general concept is bring coverage uh, for small clusters of devices at the edge, okay? That's on the, on the left side, okay? Now, on the right side, you see cases that normally go under the definition of deep indoor, okay? So uh, sensors that are placed in um, behind, uh, behind, sorry, uh, uh, thick uh, walls or a uh, water meter that can be actually mounted in, in deep wells. Uh, so in those cases, a relay is a very good solution. And those are the ones that are actually have been driving the, the specification effort, okay? Now, when I say the general, let's say, deep indoor scenario, uh, um, sometimes we could also find uh, devices, sensors, that are in industrial environments where there is a, a big amount of uh, metallic shieldings or metallic structures that act as a, uh, electromagnetic shields, and also in this case, we found very useful uh, uh, the, having the possibility to have a relay in, at 10, 20 meters from the device, uh, capable to then uh, offer this LoRa one uh, coverage of miles, of at least uh, 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 seven, uh, several hundred of meters. So those are the main use cases, but then when we started pitching the idea of the relay to the ecosystem, we suddenly realized that there were other use cases capable to leverage uh, this new feature. Uh, one, the one on the left is uh, what is coming basically from the uh, uh, fast emerging satellite uh, uh, platforms uh, that are using LoRa and RFHSS. So here I see uh, the big opportunity to, for those satellite platforms 
to bring this remote area connectivity also in use cases that require to monitor sensing information indoor. Okay? So in this case, the relay is the one that will uh, uh, offer the satellite uh, backhaul. That's one point. On the other hand, we can also say, see that uh, satellite could find small clusters of devices in remote areas where it does not make sense to deploy a gateway. Okay? In this case, those small devices, those, these small cluster of devices could be uh, composed of standard LoRa1 devices, and then the burden or the additional cost of the satellite backhaul is only transferred to one single device, which is going to uh, provide the, the, the uh, satellite backhaul. So again, it's also very effective in reducing the cost of the overall solution. Okay? Uh, on the right side, uh, it's a quite interesting use case. Uh, we are seeing uh, emerging into logistic uh, where there is a, a growing interest on uh, increasing granularity of the mon or monitoring of the assets that are transport, transported from, from uh, different regions. And here, uh, customers, some customers are trying to uh, develop solutions where they distribute three, four different sensors in different places of the container in order to understand better how the temperature, not just rely on average temperature in one single uh, wall of the container, that maybe it's, uh, it's exposed to the sun, and then, of course, the temperature difference is going to be very, very different from what is in the shadow, okay? Uh, humidity, as well, is a parameter that should be uh, uh, measured in a higher granularity. And then, okay, those, those boxes, those containers, again, are metallic, uh, behave quite well as a uh, Faraday cage. So it's difficult to propose LoRaWAN in these cases, saying you put a LoRaWAN sensor into the container, and then your gateway can be several hundred meters away. It, it's not working that way. Okay? Now the relay could be these devices. Eventually, it could be a relay with a tracker. And these devices put on the um, outside uh, side of the container. And it will be capable to bridge the sensor inside to the gateway. Okay? So that's, I'll say, the, the, those are the, the main use cases that uh, have, let's say, guided us into the specification. Now, I would like to uh, spend a few words on what do you need today to enable a relay. Uh, first, you need the implementation of, due, uh, of the LoRaWAN stack where the relay add-on has been uh, integrated. So Semtec is uh, providing this stack since July in a, uh, on a GitHub repository, so a public access uh, at this address. Uh, it's still an experimental release. So uh, it's, I would say, I won't suggest anybody to go grab and uh, go into production with this stack, but it's much enough, we considered it much enough to be exposed to most skilled customers or all those customers that have a compelling need or sense of urgency to address use cases in a short term. Okay? So that's the status of the LoRa Basics modem with the relay feature. Then you need, in terms of BOM, uh, modules that are integrating second and third generation um, devices. That's very important. That's only for the relay itself. Okay? Uh, why? We will see it later. But basically, those devices implement a feature, which is the channel activity detection that is now exploited into the relay. And third uh, is of course, you have to make sure that your network server or the network server that you are relying on implements this additional uh, feature of the, of the stack. Uh, very quickly on the scheme. So what makes really mm, very low power the relay is the, the utilization of a uh, uh, Wacom radio scheme in conjunction with the, the CAD or otherwise the channel activity detection uh, scheme w w that is uh, performed by the relay. So the relay wakes up periodically with a periodicity that can be set depending on the use cases, 
with a cat, okay? Listen, uh, chirp uh, symbols. If it listen a good chirp uh, uh, symbols, then it open an RX window in order to allow the end device uh, that what fla was flagging with this uh, uh, initial chirp to allow the, old, the, 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 the device to send the, 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 the Wacom radio uh, alert saying, I want to sell uh, uh, a message. Uh, so please open an RX window uh, after. So the relay acknowledges the reception of the war activity uh, coming from the end node and open an, an RX window, OK? This, what follows is, is essentially all the schemes that uh, provides the, the, the link, that closes the link uh, to and from the network server for the downlink, OK? Uh, now, uh, this is a quick estimation that we made on our side for a realistic use case, metering use case, where we have a CAD every, every second uh, done by the relay. The relay manages 10 devices. Everything works in SF9 uh, in European bandwidth. Uh, uh, the device needs to send 50 bytes per hour and uh, 20 bytes uh, as a downlink received. Okay? Now, uh, we simulated two cases, one where the relay uh, listen on the mandatory channel of the specification, and the other one where the relay interleaves the RX, uh, the CAD activity, between the mandatory channel SF9 and an additional SF7 that can be set uh, uh, from, from the network server. What the takeaway here is, is that the majority of the power of the relay is burned during the CAD activity. We are talking about 70, uh, between 70 and 80 percent of the, of the power consumption. And only something about 15 and 20 percent is what is needed by the TX. Okay? So this tells you that if you are constrained by power consumption, then the, you have to size and you have to optimize uh, to the use case the CAD activity periodicity and also the spreading factor uh, that eventually you could use for an additional uh, channel, OK? Uh, oh, that's, that's a demo that we prepared with our friends of the TTI. So today, Relay is also available through the TTI network server. So I really invite you to um, uh, stop by the TTI booth and ask for, to see the, the demo, because I don't have the time to show you it. Uh, what, uh, yeah, just a few takeaways. They are self-explanatory. I just want to uh, take the last few seconds to uh, uh, thanks uh, all the, let's say, ecosystem partners that in this uh, long journey that took from the specification until the, the first devices, OK? Tomorrow there is going to be device story that is, uh, is, is presenting uh, their implementation. So uh, it's, it has been a long journey, but I haven't really seen before uh, such level of enthusiasm for, for uh, this kind of innovation uh, uh, that we are now uh, making available for the LoRa one. So really, uh, that's a big thank for, for everybody that uh, uh, accompanied us into, during the, the specification and also during the first phases of, of market adoption. That's all. Thanks. <laughs>
Any questions? Because I've been home, mate.